This is Luke from Emo Electric. We're here today to talk about ePropulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus, which is their three horsepower electric outboard. We've got the shaft right here and the battery right here. And we're making this video because when somebody pick, buys this motor and picks up in person, we usually spend about 10, 15 minutes in the shop here going over some features, some benefits, how to use it and how to maintain it properly. And we want our online customers to have that same information. So before we get into how to use it and how to maintain it, first, just a few benefits. Why would you buy this in the first place? It's more expensive than a gas outboard, but it has a lot of great benefits that gas does not. So first of all, in the maintenance department, a lot of people claim that electric outboards are maintenance, which is not true. There is some maintenance that's required, but compared to a gas outboard, it's very little. We'll get more into all of that later, uh, but there's no dealing with gas, there's no oil changes, no spark plugs, no oil that could spill out of the side when the motor's on its side, and it just makes it a better user experience. You get to spend more time on the water, less time maintaining your equipment. Uh, not only is there very little maintenance, but these motors are virtually silent. Now, if we were to turn it on right here, you would be able to hear a little bit of noise coming from the motor, but this is a direct drive motor. So the motor is right here in front of the prop. And so once that's in the water, any sound that comes from it is drowned out and muffled by the water. And so all you hear is the water slapping up against the side of your hull. A few things that ePropulsion has done that we really like, they've made a battery that floats. So you can drop this in the water, pick it right back out, and you're good to go. It's not sinking down to the bottom of the bay. We also really like that there are caps for the power cable or power port and the charging port here. There's also a cap for the end of your power cable coming off your motor, which is really important when you're using these in a saltwater environment, right? keeping those caps closed, keeping those contacts clean. Another reason we love this is it's lightweight, or at least its parts are. So together, these weigh about 42 pounds, depends on the shaft length, could be slightly more, slightly less. Um, but you're never handling the whole thing together. So the shaft is 23 pounds, battery is 19. You pop the shaft onto your transom and then you place the battery on. So you're never lifting 42 pounds at once hanging over the stern of your boat. The question we probably get asked most frequently is, well, how long does it last, right? What's the runtime? Well, with the standard battery here, you get about an hour and 15 minutes in relatively calm conditions at full power. At half power, you get about two and a half hours and the speed difference between full power and half power is not 50%, right? On my sailboat, I do about five knots, five and a half at full speed or full power. Uh, and if I go down to half power, I'm doing four, four and a half knots. So most people find kind of a happy medium where you're still doing a good speed and your runtime is about two hours. So, when you open up your box, you'll have a few things. You'll have your shaft, which includes the built-in tiller. You have your battery. You also have your standard charger. So this just plugs into a regular wall outlet. You'll have the bag with your user manual, uh, locking pins, and safety lanyards. And if you purchase the motor from us, you'll have this handy little sheet that goes over some highlights from the user manual uh, and some of the things that we're talking about today. So your shaft, um, has the tiller built in and it comes with one prop on there as well as all the zinc anodes already installed so some people like to buy those to have as extras but you don't need to buy them right off the bat because uh, they are pre-installed you have your power cable that comes out of the motor here and that will plug right into your battery once you put your battery on top of the shaft the other port on your battery is your charging port so when you go to charge just take this, plug it right in, and then plug the other end into your wall outlet. We highly recommend that you not only watch this video, but you read your user manual, which is in here, uh, as well as the safety lanyards. So these are magnetic, they'll go right there. If you're not sure why your motor is not working, that's always a good place to start. Make sure you haven't forgotten about that. And then the locking pin will go right in here, and that locks your motor straight, which is a really nice feature for sailors. So once you've taken everything out of the box and you're getting ready to use your motor for the first time, there are two things that you should do first. 
One of which is registering your product on ePropulsion's website. This will give you a whole extra year of warranty coverage. So you get two years of warranty no matter what. If you register the product with ePropulsion, you get a third year. All you'll need is the receipt from us and to give them your basic information. The other thing you'll have to do is charge your battery. ePropulsion recommends that you charge up to 100%. Uh, and you'll also need to wake it up from deep sleep mode where it likely is when you get it. Now, deep sleep mode is a function that prevents the battery from self-discharging quickly. So all lithium batteries, when they just sit, will slowly lose their charge. What ePropulsion has done is put in this deep sleep mode that the battery enters once it gets down to 60% and hasn't been used for a while. And once it goes into that deep sleep mode, It'll still self-discharge, but much, much more slowly than usual. And when it's in that deep sleep mode, it won't work when you plug it into your motor. You have to wake it up first. You wake it up by plugging in the charger. So you've registered your product, you've charged your battery to 100%. Then you're gonna take your shaft, mount it on the stern of your boat. We're gonna flip open our tiller here since it doesn't open up in the tank. Once you've placed your motor on your transom here, you'll tighten up these locking bolts here. You don't have to make them as tight as you can, but you want them to be secure and make sure that this is centered on your transom. Next up, we'll grab our battery. And the first couple times you do this, you might not get it on there perfectly the first try. Um, you just have to line up these two pieces of metal with the gaps in the battery there. So it's a little bit awkward the first couple of times you do it, but after a few tries, it'll pop on nice and easy every time. Then we're gonna take our power data cable and plug it in. Now there's a little indent here, which matches a little gap there. So you don't wanna push and twist because you can bend these pins. So you wanna line those two up let it slide right in and then tighten that up and you're good to go. Then you have to grab your safety lanyard. It will power up without the safety lanyard, um, but it won't, uh, won't go into gear. And then you can power her up and you're ready to go. So here's your tiller, got forward and reverse. You don't have to spin this around like you have to with a lot of gas outboards in order to get reverse. You'll have your screen right here, which should give you runtime, um, range estimates, how much power you're using. So it's a one kilowatt motor, uh, just about, and it'll give you your power output in watts. So full throttle is about a thousand watts, half throttle about 500 watts. A uh, few other things to be mindful of. One is anti-grounding mode. So right now, this motor is locked. You can't raise it up. It's staying locked down. If you want to raise it up, you'll push this lever up here and then pull it up. We can't do it because we're in the tank here, but then you could raise it up all the way and lock it. If you're going to be operating somewhere where it's shallow and you're worried about hitting the bottom, you can put this into anti-grounding mode. So if you come over here, you see there's this little pin here. You'll pull that out with one hand and then lift that other lever on the other side with your other hand, release the pin, and now it's in anti-grounding mode. So if you were to hit something, the motor would come up a little bit. Um, now, it will also come up if you go into reverse. So make sure that you've taken the motor out of anti-grounding mode by pulling that pin out if you're going to use reverse. So as we mentioned before, there's very little maintenance involved with owning an electric outboard compared to a gas outboard, but there still are a few things that you have to do in order to take care of it and ensure that it lasts as long as possible. So probably the most important thing is for those of you who are using this motor in salt water is to rinse it with fresh water after every use. Make sure to get everything that was underwater, but you can spray the whole thing off everything sealed, it's waterproof, little water will not damage it. When you go to rinse it off, not only do you wanna rinse the outside, but you wanna turn the shaft 90 degrees and actually spray some water down 
the hole on this side and there's two more back on the other side as well. To be honest, I couldn't tell you why, but the shaft is hollow. And for those of you who are curious, Torquedo's shaft is the same way. So it fills up with water once it's down. Uh, and if you don't rinse out those holes, you'll see a little bit of salt build up down on the top of the pod here. Um, so just spray a little bit of water in there. You don't have to go crazy, just enough to rinse the salt out. Other than fresh water, there's not too much to it. Keeping these contacts clean is probably the next important thing. So you'll see that there are caps for all of these. Make sure that you use these caps, even if these aren't getting wet, just being around salt water and the salt air can lead to corrosion. So make sure that you cap them when they're not plugged in. And about once a month in season, you can spray just a little bit of WD-40 in here, a little bit of WD-40 on here. You can also use contact cleaner. Now, if you do notice some oxidation on these pins or in this port here, uh, take some contact cleaner, maybe a toothbrush, very carefully try and work that oxidation off, but be careful not to bend the smaller pins in here. Now, in terms of the battery, uh, there's not much in the way of maintenance, but there are a number of things that you can do in order to ensure that it lasts as long as it can and you don't have any safety issues with it. In terms of safety and the battery, common question we get, what about fires, right? All of those electric bikes in New York City um, hear about fires with those all the time and we want to address that head on. So this is a high quality battery with an internal battery management system, has a lot of great safety features. Usually when we have lithium battery fires and bikes and things like that, that's because the battery is poor quality to begin with. It wasn't being charged with the charger it was designed to be used with, or the battery has been physically damaged. So if you drop this battery and it splits open or a crack, or even if you just drop it and you're concerned about it, bring it into your e propulsion dealer. They can take a look at it and let you know if it's safe to use, if it needs to be repaired, or if it needs to be replaced. Charge the battery. Uh, just keep in mind that the charger can get hot, so don't leave it next to anything that's flammable. And e propulsion also recommends that you don't leave it unattended charging. So don't put it in your garage and go out for 10 hours. Uh, it's always safer to be, be around the battery when it's charging. A few things that you can do to ensure that your battery has as long of a lifespan as possible. All lithium batteries do degrade over time. So each year you'll lose a few percent of your original battery capacity. And depending on how you store the battery and how you use it, that number could be smaller or lower. So first of all, in your normal operation, you want to avoid running the battery down below 20%. That happens every once in a while, it's not a big deal, but as standard practice, once you get close to 20%, you wanna charge your battery. You also wanna avoid charging your battery after only using about 20%. So you're at 90, 80, 70%, you then charge it up again. It's not great for the longevity of the battery. So try to get in the habit of charging it when it's below 50, but above 20%, more or less. So once you're done using your motor for the season, you don't have to winterize it like a traditional gas outboard, but there are a few things that you need to do in order to store it properly. So first, let's give it a good rinse, let it dry out, hit these contacts with WD-40 one more time, a contact cleaner. You can also put a very small amount of dielectric grease on here. For the battery, you wanna make sure that it's above 60% state of charge before you store it. So as it discharges, it hits that 60% mark and goes into the deep sleep mode. If it's below 60%, just charge it up. You don't have to charge it to 100, 70% is fine. It also recommends to store the battery in an ambient temperature of 59 to 77 degrees. That's what they recommend. I think the most important part here is that we're not storing this in a freezing temperature. So make sure it's somewhere that's not gonna freeze over the winter uh, and store it somewhere where it's protected, where it's dry, wouldn't leave it in your shrink wrap boat, right? Put it in a closet inside somewhere like that where it's protected and you can access it easily.
So there are a few great accessories for the Spirit 1.0 Plus. One of them is the bag set. So this is a nice little backpack bag that the battery fits in. And then the shaft and the tiller fit in here. Most people end up buying these. I didn't think I needed them when I first got this motor for my sailboat. But after it was rolling around the bottom of the boat for one sail, uh, I came back and decided I needed the back set. So most people end up going with these. You can throw them in your truck, throw them in a hole in your sailboat, something like that. And you just don't have to worry about scratching up your motor. Another thing that we highly recommend getting is a spare prop. If you get the prop from us, it will come with two extra shear pins. So this prop is plastic and it's plastic and it has a shear pin because the idea is in the event of an impact, you run aground, we want either the prop or the shear pin to break before the motor gets damaged. If you buy an extra prop that comes with these extra shear pins, you're only off the water for about 10 minutes. If you don't buy one of these, then you have to wait to order one, come drive over here or wait for one to get shipped to you. If the shear pin breaks, you'd see it broken right there. So this comes right off the bottom of your motor with an Allen key, shear pin sits right in there. If the shear pin is broken and you don't know it, a good indicator is that the motor doesn't seem to have enough power at full speed. And what's happening is at you know low power, everything's working fine. Friction is holding this on, but once there's more load on it, the prop starts to slip on the shaft and you don't get full power. So if that's happened, it's probably a broken shear pin. Uh, and the same thing applies if the prop breaks, right? Just pull that Allen key, Allen, pull that screw out with the Allen key. The same thing applies if you break the prop, just remove that screw with an Allen key, put your new prop on with a shear pin and you're back out on the water. Right here is the zinc anode set. Just like any outboard, those are sacrificial zinc anodes. The idea is that they corrode before the rest of the motor. So just keep an eye on them. There's one behind the prop, a um, couple up here in the bracket. Uh, as long as this motor's not sitting in the water all the time, which it probably isn't, you should get years out of your sinks. The other three things on the table here are the other chargers. So it comes with your standard AC 110 charger. That charger takes about eight and a half hours to go from zero to 100%. Now, bear in mind, you're usually not charging from 0%. Uh, and for most customers, that's more than enough. But if you need to charge the battery more quickly, you can get the fast charger. So this is also 110 AC regular wall outlet, but it knocks down your charge time from eight and a half hours to three and a half hours from zero to full. We also have a 12 volt DC charger. This can plug into a cigarette lighter, or you can use this adapter and these alligator clips to attach it to a 12 volt battery does take quite a long time to charge but if you're a cruising sailor might be a nice option to have the third charging option is the solar charge controller it can work with most solar panels uh, it's a 10 amp charge controller and about 180 watt panel this is great for sailors who have their boats out on a mooring especially if you're only using your boat over the weekend you hook the charge controller up leave the boat for a couple days as long as you get some sun your battery should be charged back up. Now, if you're worried about range, you can also buy a second battery, but before you spend money on a fast charger, before you buy a second battery, I always recommend that you just try it out for a couple weeks. Whenever I've had customers who think they might need a second battery, usually they do that and they call me back and they say, hey, one battery is plenty for me. So if you guys have any questions on these accessories or anything we talked about in this video, feel free to leave a comment. We'll link uh, the web store page to buy this motor if you're interested. We'll also link the form to register your motor. And uh, happy electric boating. Thanks for watching.